You're listening to Content and Cash, a Flash Film Academy podcast. If you want to learn how to take pretty pictures, this is not the place. But if you're ready to make a living by learning the business behind the camera, buckle up because it's time to turn passion into profit with your host, Ty Turner. I want to talk about a few things today. I want to talk about three things that content creators are doing to lose big clients. Everybody that can hear me, go ahead and press one in the comments real quick. I'm going to wait for you to post that one so I can see it. We got people coming from Tampa Bay. We got people coming from other places. We'll give y'all a second. Because I want to talk about, I want to talk a little bit about a little bit about uh, just three things that people are doing. Three things where people were dropping the ball. Three things that people are definitely having an issue with. We'll give people a few seconds. Okay, anyway, let's talk about it. So again, like I said, I was talking to some gold members, um, and I was noticing a trend. I was noticing a place where people were dropping the ball when it comes to big clients. And I know I work with a lot of content creators who are new to working with big clients. They're new to to getting somebody, a brand that they've heard of on the phone. And I want to talk about three ways content creators are losing these clients. Three things I need you to be mindful of when you get this big fish wheeled in, you know, when you get it to the boat, you know, this is what you got to do to get them big fish in the boat. And these are three areas that I hear a lot of that people are losing these clients. So in this quick, real brief live, I'm going to just three quick stingers, just three quick stingers. We got the brass knuckles right here. All right. Number one, let's talk about it. Number one is they never really address the client's problem directly. They never address the problem directly. They just talk about the video that they can do. They never address the problem. So let me give you an example of this. Let me give you an example. Um, If if a client, let's say, is having a problem recruiting people and they want to create a recruiting video and you as a content creator or as we like to do as a project management, you just say, yeah, okay, we'll shoot the video. No problem. That's what you want. You need a video, we'll shoot it. You never really ask questions to understand the the root issue as to why they can't recruit people. It may not be a video. It may be two videos. It may be three videos. It may be a video plus images. It may be a video that address some things that they have issues with. I never just go with, um, I never just go with what they're saying. I never just be like, okay, you want a video. Cool. Because when you give it to them and they don't do what they expect it to do, guess who's the bad guy? You're the bad guy. So I always say go deeper with the problem. Try to understand. And also, there's also there's always a lot more upsells there. There's always a lot more potential to do more for the client. And it's not necessarily that we're trying to sell the client more. Often we're trying to make sure they have a solution that works for them. My my job is to make sure you leave here with something that works, not to sell you as much video as possible because you need video every day. And if I can show you how we can make video or photography work for your company, you'll come back every day because there is a return on that investment. Focus on providing a return on that investment and you will get a client that keep coming back because it's making them money. So real huge that you think about that. Um, as you move forward, real huge that you think about that because you, you, you can't just say, okay, we'll shoot that. Ask questions, understand what their problem is and do more. When, when you create content, understand their problem better because a lot of times clients aren't great at communicating their problem. They aren't really good at saying exactly what the problem is. And when they get to the point in a buying process where they think they need video or photo, there may be some underlying issues that they don't they don't mention because they don't know and you don't know what you don't know. So as a content creator who specializes in this, I should be able to ask questions to dig deeper. When you go to the doctor and you say, you know, my knee hurt, your doctor's going to ask questions about your back about your posture, about your insoles, about your walking, about your standing, about your sitting, about your diet. 
to help write the correct prescription. So you have to look at it as though you're the doctor. Every prescription, you know, can't just be video. You got to go a little deeper than that sometimes. Sometimes there's video on this. Sometimes there's multiple videos. But try to ask more questions and not just be the camera guy. That's one. Number two is um, a lot of a lot of my content creators don't provide clear instructions on what's going to happen next. There's no clear instructions. It's just, okay, we're going to shoot it. Okay, let's set the date. Okay, that sounds good. Okay, pay the deposit. There's no clear instructions. And if you live within a niche and you solve the same problem over and over again, you can have tangible, clear instructions on paper because they're the same for everybody. Everybody that go in line to buy something from McDonald's, no matter what they buy, the instructions on what to do is clear. You place an order, you get a receipt with a number on it, you go make your drinks, you wait for that number to be called, you get your food, you go sit down. That is their, their systems and processes or system and process for getting your food. And you should have those in place for whatever type of client you work with and whatever type of niche you work with. And I also have a portion of that that is tangible that I like to give to clients. Either I'm emailing it to you before so you know where you are in the steps. Hey, we're in the meeting stage where we like to discuss what's going to happen at this stage. And I let the client know this is where you pay the non-refundable retainer. Once we receive that non-refundable retainer, we plan a shoot date. Once we plan that shoot date, X, Y, and Z things is, is what's going to happen next. A upon arriving at that shoot date, I like to place a tangible piece of, pa piece of paper in my client's hand with my logo and things on it. It makes it feel, it's just adding value to what we offer. And trust me, even when you work with big businesses, they're not as organized as you think. They're not as organized as you think. They need you to come in and, and be more organized in this arena than they are because they're not, it's not what they do. So keep that in mind. Um, real quick, real quick, two easy payments of free 99, our capture and convert kit is available over at the Flash Film Academy. All right, so let me go to the next one because I think the next one is more important. It's, it's, it's not most important. That's loud. It's very important. Um, and it's something that, a lot of people don't do is they don't provide direct proof of your ability to solve that problem. You only provide proof of your ability to create content. This is why niche is so important. This is why it's, it's great to be a subject matter expert living in an area where you have proof of solving a problem over and over again. It makes a client say yes much faster when you are a problem solver and not just a content creator. Anybody can shoot video and photo. They're trying to decide what makes you best. They don't know. Not anybody can solve their problem. So when you have a consistent amount of proof that this is the problem I solve, it don't matter what camera you got. No matter what lens you're using, it don't matter whatever you say, do, they're going to do it. Because you solve a problem. I'll give you an example, right? A marketing agency solves the problem of marketing for a company that don't have experience in marketing. That company is not going to go to that marketing agency and say, hey, are y'all shooting on the red? Y'all shooting on the Sony? What lens you using? Are you shooting with a slider? They don't care. Because that marketing agency that may either have an internal video production company or hire a external video production company. They're solving the problem of marketing for a brand or business. You are doing the same for your clients. So let's not get that confused with the artsy stuff that you are thinking about where clients want this great artistic image. We're not talking about that. We're working with clients who want results. We're working with clients who appreciate a return on investment. Those are the clients that we're working with. Those are the most consistent, high paying clients that require the less, the least amount of work. So we're working smarter, not harder. You can go out and chase a B2C client and hope they like you that week to do business with you. 
But for me, I'm working with B2B clients where it's logical. They understand we solve a problem. We're the best at solving that problem. We solve that problem effectively and efficiently and on time. That's all I care, they care about. And when we are, when we show that we can do that and have done, done that for previous companies, they work with us. It's a no brainer. They continue to work with us. You land 10, 12 solid clients that you work with for the next couple years that helps you easily go over six figures and you're good to go. So keep that in mind. Make sure that you are transitioning from B to B to B to B to C to B to B effectively by doing these three things. And real quick before I end, because I said it's going to be quick. Let me go over them one more time. Very briefly. Number one. Um, is you don't address the client's problem directly. You only address the fact that they need video or photo. You come in and say, hey, you need a video. Okay, great. This is what I got in mind for the video. You never ask more information about their problem. Because, because when you get good at that, you'll have the ability to uncover opportunities for upsells, more videos, subscription services. You'll have the ability to grow your brand by uncovering more problems with the client. And the good thing is you're helping the client because what they're asking for wouldn't have been effective for them anyway. Once you learn their problem and from your past and your history of working in that niche and knowing what works and what don't work, you're giving them what works. Sometimes it's just at a greater scale than they can imagine or think of. And, and sometimes they don't know what they don't know. Sometimes it's better to spread money around in multiple small things than one big thing. Sometimes it's better to have uh, multiple videos drop per month or over the course of a year or a quarter than one video. Clients don't know. They don't think like that. And you as a problem solver in your niche should be thinking like that. Number two um, is you don't provide clear instructions on what's going to happen next. Even when you first reach a client, even when you first talk to a client, when they submit a form on your website, your form should automatically send back or your website should automatically send back instructions on what's going to happen next. The moment you talk to them, you should be giving them a detailed list of what's going to happen next. And a lot of people don't do that. That way, and I'm going to tell you what's great about it is sometimes when clients know they're not going the complete process, they'll stop and say, hey, I'm just looking. I'm not ready to do. Great. Thank you for not wasting my time. You know, even when they're just looking, sometimes knowing what can happen next, we're just, you, sometimes you got to assume the sale. I, I think... Um, one of the greatest things I've learned just being in sales is assuming the sale, right? And what I mean by assuming the sale is when you're talking to someone, you speak as though they're going to purchase. You speak as though, okay, so, you know, once we get the non-refundable, re like after we get the retainer today, what we're going to do is we're going to set you up with a date. And I try to pick a, a Wednesday or a Thursday as, I, I'm, as I'm talking, I'm just moving forward in the process. I try to pick a Wednesday or a Thursday because usually employees feel a little better than shooting on a Friday. Does that work for you? Yeah, Wednesday or Thursday work for me. Assuming the sale um, is a technique to kind of walk the client um, into feeling like they're already a part of the process. And let me give you an example of how this relates to other things, right? Dealerships assume the sale by taking you on a test drive, by making you feel like you already own the car because you're in it. Here's the keys, man. Go unlock it. Get in it. Adjust the seats. They have you adjust the mirrors and they do all of this because they're assuming the sale even before they run credit because they know that if you get in the car and you like it and you feel like it's yours, all they got to do is hope the credit go through. If the credit go through, it's a wrap. They got you. That's why they always take you on test drives first to help you assume the sale. If you think you want it, you're going to know you want it and you're going to sign whatever to get it after you've test drove and, and rode in the vehicle. Even if it means a high interest rate or a long payment term, you don't care because you rode in the vehicle and you like it. So they, that's how they assume the sale. That's how they walk you through the complete process. That's how they get you from beginning to end. And they tell you, you know, let's test drive it. We'll come back and do some paperwork, yada, yada, yada. So number two, again, provide clear instructions on what's going to happen next. And last but not least, um, 
We need to provide a direct proof of our ability to solve their problem. Direct proof of our ability. So you need testimonials to say, hey, I had this problem. They helped me by doing X, Y, and Z, and here are my results. Whatever that problem is, whatever the problem is on that testimonial needs to be the same problem as the person sitting in front of that computer or phone watching that testimonial. It needs to be the same problem. Hey, I, I, we had a problem, you know, bringing in new employees. We had a problem with it, recruiting. People would get here and they would, you know, go through our orientation, work for two weeks and quit. We were losing money because we couldn't get employees to stay longer. Ty at Flash Film Media suggested that on our recruiting videos, we show more of what it's actually like being in a job. He also uh, he also told us that, or, or he also suggested that during our orientation, we have more content explaining what the job is like. And we also have more video on our website giving details and showing proof as to what the job is like so that people don't get here and they're shocked and railroaded by, by what's actually required to work the job. I'm going to tell you where I learned that from working with a janitorial service who had a airport contract. They worked in the airport. It was a janitorial service. They were losing people because people didn't think that they were going to do as much cleaning as they did. They thought they were going to be sweeping tarmacs and that's it. They didn't know that they were responsible for cleaning the bins that removed the trash from the airplanes. And they thought it was too much and they quit over, over and over again. So this company thought they had a, a problem recruiting people. They thought that they weren't getting quality people and they couldn't bring in enough people to keep going through this cycle so they can reach their numbers. But the truth is they never really show what all was included in this job. They never really talked about they never really addressed the job. Um, so, so important. So important. Um, so Sam T say off topic uh, on your course. I love it, by the way. Do you have a specific structure for testimonials? Um, I'm following it, but these testimonials are pretty long. Your testimonials are short. How do you, how do I shorten mine? By being very direct um, and getting straight to the point. Right? Some... Okay, so there's two type of clients and depending on what your niche is, right? And I'm going to really break it down and make it really easy. Let's talk about age. If, if your client's ideal customer is older, they want longer. If, you're, if your ideal client is younger, and I'm going to say about the 35-year mark is where I draw the line, they want shorter. That's why older people like TV, 30-minute, one-hour-long TV. Younger people like TikTok, 60 seconds, Vine, eight seconds, short. So younger people, if, if my client's target audience is younger, if they're selling something or providing a service where they're addressing a younger audience, I want a quick, short, direct testimonial. I want a 30 second testimonial. If my audience, if my client's target audience is a older audience, we're selling retirement plans and uh, banking products. A two-minute testimonial will work for them. Now, here's the kicker. Here's the bonus to that. Here, let me use this because it's been a while. If my client's target audience is both, then I need to create two videos for my client. And as they market, they can address each video to each demographic differently. As I work with my client, my client may may not have the ability to lump all of their their target audience into one video because they have different target audiences. I have different target audiences. Some of you are photographers. Some of you are videographers. Some of you are beginners. Some of you been doing it for 10 years. You all are different. It's difficult to talk to you all, even though we all share one common interest, and that's the camera. So uh, there may be an opportunity for you to create multiple videos for your client. But you got to ask the right questions. And the only way to get to that is by fully understanding the issues that your client is having and, and fully um, 
and creating a solution. I know in module three, we talk a lot about testimonials and the different types of testimonials. So that's a good place to check it out. But I just wanted to hit you guys with that real quick, real quick in and out session. Um, very important that you think about these three things because these things have been the theme of the week. Theme of the week. You don't know how much value it, it is in having your stuff together, being organized and presenting that to the client. You don't know how much value it is in digging deeper and asking questions with the client to discover the true pain points and true issues the clients have. There's so much value in that for the client because guess what? When you ask them questions about their problem that they have not been asked before, and they say my favorite term of I've never thought about that. And the 10 other companies they talked to never made them think about that. You've just moved to the top. And oh, your higher prices now seem worth it. Because you look like you do this the right way. And not the cheap way. Clients will spend more if you give them a reason to. But that reason needs to be a value-packed reason. They need to understand that you are the subject matter expert and not somebody who can come in and take it from their level and create what they think. You need to blow them away. And I don't mean creatively. You don't need to blow them away creatively. That's not, people think I need to blow my client away with this dope image and cinematic. They don't care about that. They don't care about that. They care about a return on an investment. They rather have two videos that speak to two different audiences that drive their audience to do what they need to have strong call to actions that, that provides results than to have one well shot cinematic masterpiece that people look at and clap and go back to doing what they are doing. Businesses want videos with call to action. They want videos that invoke action period. Whether that action be to learn about their product so they ain't blowing up their customer service phone line, whether that, that video is to have them uh, disqualify themselves from, rec from recruiting or from a job, they want videos to do things for them. And if your videos only make people say, wow, this is cinematic, it's not helping. We've all seen very cinematic movies that were trash. And we've seen movies that were cheaply made that were really good movies, right? Just like movies is about the storyteller. When you work with businesses, videos are about the action they invoke, period. Nothing else. Nothing else matters in B2B. Nothing else matters. So you can invoke more action when you understand the story, when you understand the problem better. We can achieve greater things by understanding the problem. And if you're not digging deep enough to understand the problem, you will be just another camera guy. Press and record. Sam said, got it. Thanks, Todd. Um, you in the course is, is, is the edge over my competition. Hey, anytime, anytime. So I just want to say that these th three things are just, they just been the, you know, what's, the, what's hot this week. Um, and I just wanted to share that with you because it's very important. And, uh, you know, with that being said, I'll see y'all in the next video. All my members, I'll see you live tomorrow night. Everybody else, I will see you, uh, see you when I see you. You've been listening to Content and Cash, a Flash Film Academy podcast. Make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel and go to our webpage at www.flashfilmacademy.com.